Law Enforcement Live is filmed live with the men and women of law enforcement. All participants in tonight's show are innocent until proven guilty in a court of law. Viewer discretion is advised. So this is the first time for both of us doing the show. Um, do you want to introduce yourself? My name is Deputy Almanzar. Here at the Berkeley County Sheriff's Department. Been out here for nearly a year and a half now. Uh, originally from uh, Jersey. 423 Berkeley Camp 42. And I came over here to pursue Probably one twenty-three. Like dream of uh, becoming a police officer and came to the right department. So you're happy with the experience so far at the Berkeley County Sheriff's Office? Oh yeah, Office? most definitely. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's a career that ever since I was a kid I wanted to do. So finally doing it. It's kind of good. You weren't a police officer in New Jersey then? No, sir. He's all right. You're 10-4? Yeah, I'm good. All right. It's like he's finishing up there, so. Is this like a regular traffic stop? Well, no, that one right there was a, a hit and run, apparently, but it was an accident where uh, the tractor trailer hit a car. The caller thought that the tractor trailer was going to leave the scene, but it was just merging on. So right now he's getting all the information to do a police report. You said you've been here a year and a half? Yes, sir. Has it you've been with uh, the county sheriff's office the entire time? Or? I have. Give or take a couple months in the academy. Yeah, one Before that, yeah, I've been with them. Here. My first time doing this show as well, so what what can we expect? What's a, a general evening shift look like? Here? Um, now that, it, that it's kind of drizzling, you get a lot of uh, traffic accidents, um, and, you know, fortunately because of COVID, uh, it has skewed our, our, car, our call volumes and stuff, but uh, it's usually like domestics, um, now it's Friday, so a little bit later you get bar calls, a lot of probably DUIs on a Friday night and stuff like that, but um, for the most part, you know, it's responding to the calls that the public gives us, park which has a diverse number of calls. So right now we're headed south down Interstate 81, is there like a particular route that you'll run or do you just kind of travel around the area responding to different calls or how does that work? Yeah, um, well there's no set route that we run, we just respond everywhere in the county and um, I generally look for traffic violations, um, motor motorist assists also if somebody needs help and stuff like that and then um, one of my co-workers needs um, assistance or they're out in the call and I see that they've been out for a couple minutes by themselves and I'm nearby I just tend to pop by and help them out and stuff It's going to be Tabor Station Road, exit ramp, 81 northbound. Now should I just wait here or should I step out and film?
Chuck reports. Could have been just there. For a couple minutes. Yeah, that was the line system. Union 956. He's alright. Yeah, to answer the question that you had before in terms of riots, um, unfortunately, I, well, I, haven't been, I haven't been um, out there with the riots. Um, I've had a couple of my co-workers out there also, uh, for the most part, it's been peaceful. It was a little pick up part. I think it was uh, Saturday that I heard about, but other than that, it's, it's been, for the most part, peaceful. For the morning Eastern Panhandle talk show, we had the Martinsburg PD chief and the new, the new chief and new captain on to talk about the the riots and I guess the one issue was somebody fired uh, some shots and they at that point they still hadn't determined you know where the where the bullets landed or you know whether it was just someone shooting up in the air or what what happened with that is the is the county involved with that investigation at all or is that strictly the city to be honest I believe that's that's the bump that I was uh, referring to as that happened on Saturday. Um, I just heard the same thing that you heard, pretty much. Um, I was off that day, and I don't know what's going on in terms of the investigation and which which municipality is uh, taking care of it. But if it happened in the city, you know, we were out there also, so it could be both parties, both municipalities taking care of it. How often? Um how often is it separate or combined effort between the well we we, we generally um we generally respond you know we're, we're brothers all right so we we go out if if i see a martinsburg police officer out on a traffic stop i help him out um and vice versa um if they have any type of uh problems going on in, in, a, in a call or they need to serve something and they ask for our help, we go out and um, say thing with them. If we need them, they're always there. You know, we're, we're always greeting each other with open arms. But um, generally, if, if they have an issue in the city, they, they can deal with it. The, they deal with it, but... They need our help, of course, we're always there. So over your time, a uh, year and a half, are there certain cases or incidents that stand out to you? Or? Not really. <laughs> um, I try to deal with everything, like try to close all the incidents and everything with 100%, uh, meaning that, you know, anything that I could do, I do. Or any call that I'm responding to, I respond to it to my ample degree. Like if I have any questions or whatever, I just call one of the, the supervisors on shift, and um, they tend to help me out. And once I'm done with that, then you know I try not to let it affect me um, at home. So I just let it be. Like once I deal with it, make sure everything is all right. Go from there. Sure nothing really stands out. To be honest, it's harder for a, a job like a police officer to kind of leave it at the office when they go home. I mean, you, you kind of mentioned that at how you know are there situations where it's hard to do that? Or? Yeah, definitely, definitely. Um, yeah, I haven't. I haven't, and I don't want to. I know it does come with the job, but I haven't really um, experienced uh, any uh, like sexual assaults towards children. And being that I'm a father of two, uh, that would probably affect me a lot. And yeah, I'll probably remember that a long time but like I mentioned before I try I try not to I try to leave everything at the office hard for now we get out of here behind the middle school 
but I de definitely understand how some people could bring it home and unfortunately, you know, becomes a problem. So let's switch gears off of that one. What's What are the, uh, the fun parts of being an officer in, in, for Berkeley County? Of course, getting into stuff. Um, what do you mean, like at, like access to events and things, or what? well, dealing with the public, dealing with the public. Um, see, I'm one of the officers that, that likes to bring a smile to people, especially kids. I'm not a clown, but um, I feel I feel I feel great. It makes me happy just to see kids around. Hey, you know, and and. Hug in and everything, the police department or the police officer and stuff like that, and um, you know that right there is is rewarding, makes me happy. Um, and also, you know, um, getting that adrenaline rush when I said to get into stuff like getting that adrenaline rush, um, where you know you're serving a warrant or whatever, and you don't know what you're getting into, you get that adrenaline rush. Job. But um, yeah, just bring it, bringing smiles to people's faces. Brightens, makes me feel happy. It usually comes with um, when responding to calls, where um, sometimes the fear is presented to to um, the kids that were bad guys or or. And, oh man, you know the cop. We're gonna we're gonna call a police officer, and then he's gonna take you. And then once we get there, they're scared. So once once I'm in there, and you know something happened or whatever the case may be, and they're there, I try to ease them up. And then once I see that they're they're happy and they're they're joking with me, then I feel you know good. Like I could, I accomplished something with a kid. You know what I'm saying? But um, yeah. That, you know, there has been fairs and stuff like that that we interact a lot with the public. But for the most part, it's like bringing calls and stuff like that. And I like, like to um, ease everything up. My expectations is that it would kind of be extreme reactions, you know, one way or the other, where some people, you know, would be very supportive and appreciative, and then some people sort of have a negative. Uh, yeah, there's never in between that. Right. <laughs> there's never that in between. But, um, I like to deal with the people that are, like, against police officers, right? Because I like to change their minds on you know, so When they are expecting, oh man, look at this guy. Especially with my, see, I have a face that pretty much sells that oh yeah look at this guy this guy's having his day type of face but I'm really not I have that demeanor in me but, um, yeah I like to change their their, their thoughts of uh, police officers but we do have a lot more people that respect and um, our pro police officer all the way. Sure. It's just like you that don't like them. Probably with prior instances with them, depending on what police officers they dealt with and stuff like that. You mentioned you have kids when this airs. You think they'll be excited to watch it, or yeah, especially my daughter. She's all into this TikTok and. Recording herself dancing and everything. <laughs> as soon as I uh, give her the news, I was probably gonna be on the air. She's gonna be all stoked and happy and stuff. Six years old. My son is probably gonna be happy also. He wanted to become a police officer, but then um, my mother-in-law started teaching him how to cook and stuff. So now he's saying that, you know, I think I changed my, my, my profession, my career. I think I want to be a chef now. I'm like, here we go. So, <laughs> believe it or not, I think we might be the same age, though. I look a lot younger than what I am. Oh, yeah, how, how old are you? 32. 37. 
Well, I'm still younger, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I'm always happy when people think I'm, you know, a little younger. <laughs> I'm starting to get a few gray ones in the oh, no, in the beard and stuff, but <laughs> you say you have three kids? Yes. I have yeah. a, a, all all boys: a twelve-year-old, a seven-year-old, and a four-year-old. Oh wow! Yeah, I got a nine-year-old boy and a six-year-old girl. As soon as I got the girl, I started developing all these grays right here. <laughs> I bet. Could only handle so much estrogen in your home. <laughs> yeah, I feel bad for my wife sometimes. I'm waiting for Okay. I know they say the same thing about us too. Yeah, I'm gonna drop off at 8 p.m. I'll be clear. The thing is that my daughter. Now, you know, not only does she, like, she looks like my wife, but she acts a lot, a lot like me, which what kind of is a bad thing. Because <laughs> that's why we clash, where I get clash with her a lot, and it's like, can't be mad at her. He knows what buttons to push. Yeah, family always do. That's what's tough about them. <laughs> when you hear your calls coming over the radio like that, everything's got its own number code, right? Like for the most different. part. How, how long does it take to memorize all that stuff? Is that something that you get down right away in the academy, or you get you get? the main ones down but um a lot of agencies have different codes so they can't teach the codes for the whole department like when we go out to the academy we got different counties and everything throughout the whole state go down there so i know they share different codes and stuff but for the most part like the simple codes are, are someone taught over there but you really learn them while in uh, field training and um, just studying them and stuff. Do you keep like a cheat sheet in case you forget what something is? Of course. <laughs> of course. Officially decided to open line, no sounds of disturbance. Call back and a female answer when we asked if she was okay, she hung up on us again. We were not able to confirm that address. Still just Questionable excitement on Rockcliffe Drive there. Oh. Hang up call. <laughs> Probably the mother gave the the kid the phone and they called 911. Uh, you get that a lot? <laughs> yeah. I remember when I was uh, like four years old, I got in trouble for calling 911. <laughs> <laughs> We, we, everybody did. <laughs> My son did it while I was a deputy. I, had, I, had, I hadn't even called out yet. And uh, he called us. He called and I was like, yeah, it's me. It was my son. <laughs> quick, quick way to get in touch with dad at work. Right? Really? Yeah, I generally don't like to uh, ride around with half a tank because you never know what, what you can get into. A routine traffic stop can in seconds turn into a pursuit. And then um, if you have half a tank or less than that, you can lose the, sub the, the, the subject and, you know, be out there stranded waiting for a tow because of your negligence and not <laughs> fueling up. That's a good point. Can't stop for gas in pursuit. <laughs> there are days where uh, you get bored and you stop somebody and you're like, oh, I wish this guy would make a run for it. Yeah. Four six one three four seven seven five four zero. Eight nine one three three zero. Eight nine. If you're available, can you check Rockcliffe while I'm running this? Go ahead and give me that call on Rockcliffe. Copy 159. Video welfare check reference and I'm on one hang up. 
1656 Rockless Drive. Was a ping of the cell phone. She called back, reached the email. She disconnected when we asked if everything was okay. Copy. So, um, while I was getting gas, we got a call from um, a theft. Guy, the subject had stolen a pack of beers and he fled on foot. So I asked the officer that responded to the call if he needed some help right now for one stage and stuff. He said he was going to handle it. He had a call prior to that. So we're going to go deal with that um, call. Help him out there. But it was a call that, um, that you heard. Caller stated it's a red collared polo with black shorts. He was by himself and he stole one single beer and a bottle of wine. And they do have footage there at Dollar General. That's ridiculous. Happy other day, cell phone to the kids to play games on or whatever. Yeah. Well, we can have Bert. 159. Spoke to the residents there that location everything was kind of poor. Go ahead and clear it. 98 Copy. Okay.
side of this building I'll take a look at it. it's a big wide open area but just check the um, area because they saw me but never crossed the tracks again yeah I'm probably gonna 15 him I don't know um, you heard what he said but um, it's generally where he walked through so what we're looking for is the beer can that he stole um, the associate in there already ID'd him, saying that, yeah, that was a guy out there. One fifty nine, one thirty one. Is 
through. Is there a bottle of wine? 159, 151. What's that? Is there a bottle of wine? You asked 131 what type of uh, beer it was. Brand. Thanks, sir. <laughs> oh, it's a 
the back there. I think it was these two. I know for a fact it was this one. Which these are like the three, this is like six. Grabs. Okay. Three and six. Hmm? Three and six. So like nine, ten bucks, seriously. You gonna go do one of those little training receipts? Yeah, sure can, baby. Oops, sorry, Sorry. Honey. I'm coming, I know what's going on, too. You guys are back. something like that where it's like ten dollars worth of merchandise uh, what kind of what well they're probably gonna press trespassing they're gonna probably trespass him um, if he has priors if he doesn't have priors and it's um, usually a citation you get trespass you can't no longer shop in there um, but if he has priors then uh, depending on what type of priors he had and everything um, you get convicted, you get a misdemeanor, go, go to jail and stuff. One, two, three, four, three. One, two, three, four, three. Yeah, there's a new, new norm now. <laughs> Hand sanitizer everywhere. I knew that was the reason I wore my yard work shoes instead of my good sneakers. Mm. That's a good call. <laughs> guy that we were just dealing with, he's gonna get arrested. Um, as he said, yeah, but he was the one that, based on the video and everything from Dollar General, he was the one um, that took it, and it, it's plainly obvious. That he did take point to the video. Yeah. 
Anybody walk back through here? Did you? No. Oh, okay. Yeah, they cut through. Oh, okay. Okay, cool. Thanks, man.
Can you check if he's in there, ma'am? Oh, sure. Yeah. Or here yeah. for another 20,000. Yeah, I What's going on with James? I don't know, let him for him. Let me out here to look for him too. What do you do? I don't know. The other officer is uh, 119, you want to come up front? No. Do you have a warrant or something? I'm going to bring over my supervisor. He was the one that was out here by himself. Yeah, I need you to unload the truck. Is there? I need you to put the groceries in. They were here the other day, so. Who was? The police. No. Looking for him? No. Oh, okay. Why were they here, though? Uh, for a disturbance or something. Oh, okay. How long ago have... When was the last time you seen him? Yesterday. Really? Mm -hmm. What, right here? Mm -hmm. He was out here? Yeah. Was he drinking? Um, I tried to have him uh, drink a beer with me, but he didn't drink. No? Oh, okay, cool. <laughs> oh, my God. Look at that. It is. James show up here? Yesterday. Yesterday. Yesterday he didn't come today? No. Okay. Who was your buddy in the white Jeep here that you just sold some stuff to? I didn't sell anything to him. No? no. Well, we just busted him down the road. He said he just came from your house. I saw him leave your driveway. I honestly think that my brother might have hit him up. Your brother? Uh-huh. Who are you? You're Andrew? No. You're Pete? Yeah. Because I don't have a phone to like get a hold of anybody, so like... Is he in there? That's what I'm assuming. 
Is Andrew in there? No, he the left. Car? No. He left already? Yeah, on a scooter or something. Well, that's funny because I didn't see nobody leave this house. I just seen that white Jeep come in and out of here. And well, if somebody was like here, they would have gone out the ago. back door into the woods. Oh, 20 minutes ago. It was like 10 minutes ago. Like I said, I saw him well, pull out of your driveway. My left like 20 minutes ago. Huh? I said my, uh, my brother left 20 minutes ago. So you were here when the white Jeep came? Yeah. Okay. So what were they doing here? I don't know. You don't know what they were doing here? You mm -hmm. just let them in your house? Uh, I'm a, like, a, like I said, I assume he was here for my brother. I don't really know. They probably uh, doesn't well, I mean, know well, who it was. I feel like I, I'd be tripped out sometimes because like, I, I haven't been able to get a hold of anybody or message anybody. I mean, we, we, like, we'll, we'll, just go, we'll just go apply for a search warrant with the magistrate. We'll get our company. Raid your house again, find whatever y'all are selling. We're going to go find James. Y'all have a good day. I don't sell anything, sir. <laughs> I really wanted to stop at that white Jeep because they were in there. Like I pulled in here, there was nobody in the driveway. Here. Pull back around, they're there. I checked to see if James might have been in that car. It's two women in the passenger seat. Pull out down here, get to a van, and they're pulling out. So they were in there for like 30 seconds. To get that.
Get out of your hair, okay? We appreciate you. Good looking. Alright. Thank you. I guess we can get up. Yeah. Let's see a heavy dude, no shirt, no shoes. She gave consent. We searched the house. We didn't find him. Well, I guess I was wrong. I'll be the first one to admit I was wrong. I don't think she gave consent. Yeah, no, well, I, I stood there, I went like, do you mind if we search the house? He was like, no, no, go ahead. I was like, all right, I don't mind. Stop. said a meth lab operating in there a couple months ago. Really? Richie busted it. down or the puppy? No, they, they, they put the puppy down because they were trying to just do whatever they could to come back there and put the raccoon down without me having it. Joey Karen says I'm finding out of crossing oh, okay. to call us. Yeah, so you see what they did. So, so the altercation, the altercation. I'm, 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 I'm a fair person. The altercation between you and and your friend was all based on. Um, it, was all, it, was, it was it was based over a T-shirt. That T-shirt that was out there that said 1975. Yeah. It was based over that T-shirt. It's crazy. Hello. Yeah, uh, Berkeley County. One male. Do you want to copy big lines? There's an echo. Fully sure if you saw him walking towards big lines. It's going to be available for Walker, check with an angle, one hang up, 800 block, it's hungry. As you can tell, calls start picking up now. <laughs> I see that. Address, you get all those same sure, calls on your radio that's on yeah. it. Yeah. That's from it. It's going to show the same driveway. See, already Very know the guy trying to hang himself in the bear yeah. in the road. <laughs> I heard that in there. Are 
Searched that lady, the owner from there says that yes, she knows him and he's bipolar. So, could also be bipolar too. 793 585 six other units on that domestic. I saw you on YouTube. No. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Am I on there right now? Would you like to be? No. Okay. <laughs> Easy kill wait. My friends, I don't know what you're doing. Hmm? And I don't know what you're doing. I'm trying to talk to you to get your side of the story. All right, so what happened? Well, I don't want to sit down here. You want to sit? Flip-flop somewhere. I don't know why the cops are here. I'm called in this. Well, that's why I'm trying to figure out why I'm here. Well, I mean, I talked to them. I want to talk to you. Are you really? Hmm? Are you that pretty? Huh? And you get to do that? I'm sorry. The truth is, these are my friends. <clears throat> friends? Yeah, and I fell down. 
You alright? No, I don't know. I reckon I am. I mean, I don't think you need stitches. No, I don't think. I reckon I'm trying. These are my friends. But, that's all. Okay. <clears throat> I came down here for... Vacation kind of thing, mm -hmm. and I evidently I feel that ain't good. How did you guys get here? Someone called us. Yeah, that doesn't yeah. make sense to me. Don't make sense to me either. I mean, all I know is I got called here because apparently there's a disturbance or something. Day or two. All right, we'll just stay over here and go to sleep, all right? Yeah. All right, you take care. Mm -hmm. Keep okay. in charge and you sing. Okay. No. They, uh, just stay for a while I don't, uh, until he sobered up. Okay. All right. That's what I agreed to with somebody. Okay. Cool. Um. All right. No problem then. Anyway. So you just came over here for just what? That was Katie Catch. I'm his friend. You're his friend? Yeah. Okay. Well, if everything's good, then just go back in there, all right? You are real. Come on in here, but uh, seven-day retirement. Take care. So, I'm not, I'm not worried about this. I don't want this He's guy on my serious. property. He's serious. Look at him. Go to the sheriff's department tomorrow. Request trust oh, I'm glad orders. I got to put a smile on your face. If you feel it's necessary, get a personal safety order. It's like a restraining order. So this guy's allowed to come walk back over here, dude? No, I told him. Stay over there. Where's he at? Will you give him a light so he can see the sign? Thank you. I mean, where is he? No. no, no, he's over at the residence right next door. Yeah, he's fine over there. Are those his flip flops? You don't even know yeah. him. Yeah. Yeah. He's yeah. fine with him being there. So it's all right for him to come over here and beat no. me up again? No, 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 no it's no. not. No. We're not saying that. It's battery, it's not domestic. She already advised him to stay over there. And no, if, he, right. if, he, if he comes back and you give us a call, then. Did your daughter want to talk to me? She no, because she, she's, she's in love with, with this there. guy and wants to beat her some more. Hey. Developing a fan club. I think that uh, my wife is not going to see that part. <laughs> like I mentioned to you before, I get, I get, I get that. Like I'm not. Just my 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 demeanor, my face. It's serious. So it looks like the guy came over and uh, wanted to. Parker twenty four forty six. Wanted to see his girlfriend or whatever. He was drinking. I don't know if it was father or brother. Gentleman was there. Um, I guess doesn't like him. I didn't want him there. He got into physical altercation. And uh, subject male stumbled over to the neighbor's house. Um, I seen that one of the other gentlemen at that house wanted to wanted to say something. So I asked him a question, and he said, "Yeah, he doesn't live here." But he gave consent, the owner did, for the male to stay there for the night until he gets a little better. It's been a pretty exciting Friday already for me. Is this pretty standard for you? Or? Uh, evening shift? Yeah. Well, like I said before, like in the beginning of the shift you saw that it was slow. But then it gradually starts getting because people come out of work. Um, as soon as they start opening the bars up, alcohol plays 
major and then the major major play on the when it, they open up the bars do. So but yes, typical Friday. Is there a particular time that's like a peak time for crime or no. it's just kind of random? Any time. <laughs> Probably gonna be coming up. This one actually that occurred a couple minutes ago. Is that out here? Responded to. A vehicle that was on this top. Looking, uh, fluid. All over the place. Still aim the camera. <laughs> oh, the one, the, the big guy that, that we took. It. Yeah. <laughs> I guess if I was a true journalist, I would get the shot even with my pants down around my ankles, right? But... <laughs> I don't feel like that's a good look for the first day on this. <laughs> the family ever worry about you when you're working late nights and stuff? Yeah, definitely. I, um, I think I'll say. And um and I haven't done so like I haven't I haven't really texted her as much as I, sh I usually do. But yeah, they get worried. Parents over in Jersey, they get worried too. Yeah, the reason why I stopped him was because his um left tail light is not working so when i seen uh traffic um braking Robert, i didn't see his brake on light We're trying to get on, on this side the wall. he was aware of it he just um fought the vehicle too so he has probably paperwork and everything he's saying that he's on his way to work so right now what i'm waiting for is his uh, license to make sure everything is all right and um, he'll be on his way I generally like to do a driver's side approach, but um, but it all depends too. Right here, I couldn't do a driver's side because of the way that that the road is it's way too narrow, and if I would have stepped onto up, on on the traffic, it would have been bad. So that's why the passenger side. You really 
you have to be alert and aware of everything. Five, you're all the time. Wrong. I would imagine that that's like when you finish a shift, are you just like totally drained then, or do you kind of get used to maintaining a high level of alertness? Or? You're, you're kind of like, even on my off days, I'm like looking at everything. Hearing the radio and stuff like that. And, well, of course, not hearing the radio on my off day, but I mean, like, I'm constantly alert. Like, if I'm on the road, I'm looking everywhere and making sure screens and everything is all right for you. You know, yeah, the first couple of days to this job, yeah, you're ingrained and then you start getting customers and getting having migraines. Yeah, because I wasn't used to it. I was trying to. At the beginning of this, like, we got FPO, I was just trying to grasp everything fast. Which once you drop, you have to kind of, like, gradually grasp new things and stuff. We try to jam your brain with a whole bunch of information at once. or anything you want to close with? Or? It's a fun job. I like what I do. Uh, that's it. Do you have any advice for uh, people who are interested in getting into law enforcement? Yeah. Um, it's not, that's not what media makes it to be like we're bad guys or whatever uh, we're here to help we're here to help the public we have families kids uh, that we have to come home to uh, don't judge us don't judge every single one of us just based upon an action of one person uh, just if you want to do it, go through it, 
Seven, four, like. Yankee, six, eight, two, I appreciate you uh, letting me ride along and <laughs> hopefully uh, we get another person because I was literally, you know, I'm not kind of shy and I really don't talk much. <laughs> but yeah, you know, I enjoyed it though. Well, that's all right. Having, I hope, you, having you here. Hopefully we get to do it again sometime. Yeah. Let's see. <laughs> you take care now, man. You too. Law Enforcement Live is filmed live with the men and women of law enforcement. All participants in tonight's show are innocent until proven guilty in a court of law. Viewer discretion is advised. Yeah!